Good morning. Today we're reading Psalm 78, and I'm going to actually divide it into two videos today because it's pretty long psalm. But before I start it, I want to encourage you as you listen to hear the heart of the psalmist, and which is directed by the Spirit of God, of the importance of sharing and not neglecting to teach and talk about the things the Lord has done the faithfulness of God and the stories from the Bible and the stories from our own lives and the stories from the generations of those who have followed him to teach them to the younger generations and to teach them to our kids as we go about our lives. Oh, my people, listen to my instructions. Open your ears to what I am saying, for I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past. Stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. And I just want to stop real quick, and I'm reminded of how throughout the Bible, both in the Old and in the New, Jesus and the Father talk to us and teach us through parables, through metaphors and symbols within the stories that he gives in scripture. So we aren't to take everything we read at face value. If there's a story from the Old Testament, or if there's a parable from the New Testament, the the book of Revelation, we don't just take everything at face value. Though much of what happens is literal, there's a lesson and a parable and a deeper meaning, and there's layers of depth to everything we study in the scripture which is one of the main reasons the Lord speaks to us in dreams through metaphor. And I know we've talked about that many times. Verse 4, We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. For he issued his laws to Jacob. He gave instructions to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children so the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born, even the children not yet born, and they in turn will teach their own children. So as we teach our children of the things that God has done, as we teach them the word of God, the Israelites would actually teach them everywhere they went, as they walked along the road, as they ate dinner together, As they did life, they would actually teach the ways of God and the laws of God to their children. So it might be written onto them, like onto their hearts. But it's also not just for our children and the generation beneath us, but the generation's not even born. Because if we don't teach it to them, there'll be a a break in the chain, you might say. There'll be uh, a skip where when we forget to to teach them, though our children won't be able to teach their children. So it's so important to value the passing on of the faithful word of God and his testimony to our kids and to the generation that comes up after us. So each generation should set its hope anew on God, not forgetting his glorious miracles and obeying his commands. Then they will not be like their ancestors, stubborn, rebellious, and unfaithful, refusing to give their hearts to God. So there were seasons in Israel's history, just like in the history of time, there's generations that on a whole will forget what God has done, will forget to follow him, will not honor his word, and that generation will will be marked by rebellion, will be marked by refusing to surrender to God and operate in his ways. But amongst those generations, there are always some who are that faithful remnant, who do value the Lord's word, even in those rebellious generations. But we don't want to be one of those generations. We want to be the generation that remembers the word of God and teaches it to the generations after. The warriors of Ephraim, though armed with bows, turned their back and fled on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by his instruction. So this verse talks about that the tribe of Ephraim, even though they were mighty in battle and very well prepared in the physical, they turned their backs in fear and ran from their enemy and ran from the the trial that faced them in their day because... 
they didn't keep God's covenant. They hadn't put God's word into their hearts and followed it in preparation to the storm that faced them. And so they ran from the storm when it faced them. And that's what happens to a generation that doesn't doesn't value the faithful testimony of God and his power and his might. Verse 11, they forgot what he had done, the great wonders he had shown them, the miracles he did for their ancestors on the plain of Zoan in the land of Egypt, for he divided the sea and led them through, making the water stand up like walls. In the daytime he led them by a cloud, and all night by a pillar of fire. He split open the rocks in the wilderness to give them water as from a gushing spring. He made streams pour from the rock, making the waters flow down like a river. Yet they kept on sinning against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They stubbornly tested God in their hearts, demanding the foods they craved. They even spoke against God himself, saying, God can't give us food in the wilderness. Yes, he can strike a rock so water gushes out, but he can't give his people bread and meat. So in this, we see that the people of God had been instructed to remind their children and their children's children of how God had delivered them from the land of Egypt. So they would remember how powerful he is so that when they face the same type of opposition or when they came up to a seemingly impassable sea, they would declare and decree what the Lord had done for their ancestors, which would build up their faith and make them, cause them to not rebel against their own father, against their own Lord. But the people in the wilderness, they stubbornly tested God, demanding things from him, and they, in their unbelief and doubt, even though he had just led them through, the middle of the sea and made the walls of the sea stand up like walls. Even though they had seen this mighty miracle, they still said in doubt and unbelief, God won't do it. God won't be able to feed us. But he did, right? He did send them manna from heaven. He did send them pigeons every day to eat. He did make water pour out of a rock when there was no stream or river nearby. And so it's we have to... It, we have to teach our hearts, we have to teach our souls the things that God has done in the Word of God, but also in our own lives and the lives of those around us, so that we don't come into rebellion and unbelief like the children of Israel did, even though they had just witnessed His power and faithfulness. So I just want to encourage us today to speak what God has done in our lives to our children, to our grandchildren, to the youth around us, to the youth that God has placed in your life, to speak what he has done with, uh, with passion, with fervor, and with commitment to do that all the days of our lives because they need to know who God is so when they face the storm that will face them in their generation, they will rise up and be that faithful remnant who says, even though this seems impossible, I know God can do it. God can make a way because he made a way for my ancestors.